If we are to talk of tactics, then routinely accusing your critics of employing illegitimate tactics is a common illegitimate tactic in itself. <laughs> this particular one, that as every criticism of anti-Zionism is motivated by bad faith, there can be no fair criticism of anti-Zionism, is widespread. Let me just loosen this knot. <laughs> it has for a long time been argued that pro-Israeli Jews deliberately conflate all criticism of Israel with anti-Semitism in order to silence their opponents. Well, if there were Jews who deliberately did such a thing or still do so in their hearts, there will be very few in politic enough to do it openly any longer. The point has been taken. Yes, you can be a critic of the settlements, Gaza, the wall. Not sure about the country's right to exist, but okay, be a critic of that as well and still not be an anti-Semite. But what decidedly doesn't follow from that is that so long as you are a critic of Israel, you can't be an anti-Semite. Yet that by false syllogism is the point at, what, at which we have arrived. The syllogism goes like this. I think we should all have it implanted in our hearts and in our brains so we know what we're dealing with. Not all critics of Israel are anti-Semites. I am a critic of Israel. Therefore, I am not an anti-Semite. <laughs> In this way has anti-Zionism become an inviolable space. Question it, and you are deemed to have cried anti-Semitism. And since to cry anti-Semitism is a foul, no position from which it is rational to question anti-Zionism remains allowable. By the infernal logic of this magic circle, the anti-Zionist is doubly indemnified. Firstly, against any criticism of his position whatsoever, since the status of such criticism has been reduced to that of a tactic. And second, secondly, against the possible accusation of anti-Semitism, which anti-Zionism cancels out. <laughs> I don't myself argue, no I don't, that anti-Zionism is a method for circumventing Jew-hating while indulging it. But were that to have been its intention, it could not have been better planned. And certainly if you consider your outlook to be liberal, but you cannot forgive Jews' anti-Semitism, that's to say for troubling your conscience, your conscience about the Jew as a victim, then anti-Zionism allows you to look in both directions at once. I take the demotion or redefining of anti-Semitism, the scaling down of it as a crime and the removal of all definitions of it from Jewish hands to be of the same order of moral subterfuge as the redefining of the Holocaust. Though it will never be put in such terms, Jews are considered to have forgone the right to own even a part share in saying what anti-Semitism is, or to judge the extent to which they are, or indeed ever were, its victims. By virtue of their failure to learn the lessons of the Holocaust and implement them here in Israel, or indeed in any other parts of the world where they continue, where Jews continue to scheme, to lobby and exploit, they have cancelled out all entitlement to the usual decencies, let alone the usual legalities in matters of racial discrimination and incitement. The statement by distinguished English film director Ken Loach that anti-Semitism is perfectly understandable, given Israel's treatment of the Palestinians, a statement one cannot conceive so otherwise humane a man making in regard to any other form of racism is a frightening example of this self-justifying reasoning. Thus, thus has the shame of thinking anti-Semitic thoughts been lifted from the shoulders of liberals. Since there can be no such crime as anti-Semitism, Jews having stepped outside the circle of offence in which minorities can be considered to have been offended against, there is no charge of anti-Semitism left to answer. The door is now wide open for those who truly believe they have nothing in their hearts but love to stroll guiltlessly through to heaven. Thank you very much.